Vast Commerce, demonstration of Vast Commerce configuration and setup. Demonstration here, the goal is to show some of the features and functionality that is available to modify the user experience with Vast Commerce. In Vast Maintenance, we have several different choices here. I'm going to start by going into Controls. And within Controls, under the tab, the field for Parts Catalogs, we have some different choices in here. One that I have currently set to suppress is suppress labor quals or qualifiers, service writer comments. I've chosen to suppress those at the moment. Um, for this demonstration, I'm going to show the difference of what this does when it's turned on and turned off. And then I'm going to go into what we call uh, integration configuration settings and show you some of the features that are available there as well to adjust the overall user experience of vast commerce. So as you just saw, I made a change to the control file setting for the suppressing of the labor qualifiers. And I'm also going to go into integration configuration settings here and into vast commerce. And I'm going to scroll down here ways where it says uh, labor. Suppress labor detail is currently set to false. OK, so I'm going to leave that alone for right now. We'll come back to that in a moment. So I'm going to go into this customer's work order just to show you what that means. And again, it's totally user definable on how you prefer to have this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to labor or actually I'll go into yeah labor and I'm going to select from the alpha search a water pump. So I just type in water pump and I'll go with the water pump R&R. &R. And it comes up with a list of different choices for me, but it'll highlight the water pump R&R &R job at 1.8 and 2.2 hours. So you see all the information down here, note if performed in Michigan. This is something that I can configure within my AutoCAD catalog setup, and I'll get to that in a moment. So this is just a note for technicians, maybe where they wanna add additional time manually. But it shows the include removal of component and so on and so forth, but it's also showing me all the stuff about the model down here, like LS, LT, Z71, et cetera. Um, and by putting a check mark on that and posting this, we see that the service writer comments brought over not only the water pump R&R &R and the definition to include the removal of, but it brought over all of this information right here. This information that you see here was determined to print based on the control file settings of suppressing qualifiers. So if I turn that back on, then the next time if I checked a water pump, it would not include what is currently highlighted in blue here. That is optional. So a lot of people think that that's just overkill and they don't want all that information printed on the customer's repair order or the final invoice. So the next demonstration that I show you um, is going to be with these both turned off. So all that it's going to show me is just the water pump R&R. &R. So I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I've gone back into vast maintenance under the control section and set up parts catalogs and I've put a check mark on the suppression of the labor qualifiers. So that's been done and I have left the integration configuration settings so that it is still going to show me the labor suppressed labor details here is still false. So let's go back into point of sale. Let's throw on the same water pump again under labor and look at the subtle differences. So I type in water, go with the water pump R&R, &R, and now on the screen here, you can see that it's still showing the information on the screen here. However, when I select the water pump and post it to the ticket, we see under the service writer comments now that it has removed all of that additional vehicle specific qualifiers. So I prefer this view right here where it shows what's included in that particular uh, service or procedure. And one last thing, I'm going to turn off now the integration configuration settings. So I'm going to change the suppressed labor detail to true and save that. Integration configuration changes can be made on the fly. They do not require a restart of VAST. So you'll notice I'll just simply delete that water pump, throw it right back on. I'm going to go down to my alpha search, type in water again, water pump R&R. &R, and we will select the same thing. Again, the screen hasn't changed visually. It's just simply what it's bringing over to the work order. Now, 
as you can see, it's only bringing over the bare basic description of water pump R and R. Now, again, it's all about preferences here. Everybody has slow uh, differences on how they prefer to see the printout of this. So, obviously, the printed repair order and final invoice would include not only the part number uh, and the description of the work that's being performed as far as labor cooling system, but it would also bring over the water pump R and R in a or anything else that you choose to bring along with it based on both controls and integration configuration settings. For the remainder of this demonstration, I will not be making any other control file settings. So like I said, everything that we test here in integration configuration settings can be tested on the fly. Again, I'm gonna go into vast commerce and I've got several things here about the application flow. And again, these are all based on my preferences. So the first thing that we're going to show is where it says advance on select and post review screen. I currently have them both set to true, but again, it's all about user preference. With those two items both set to true, basically what we're looking at here is where I'll display advance on select is true. So if I'm in the V item broker catalog and I select belts, hoses, and water pumps, like I had done before, and hit parts, it's coming up with a list of different components here. If I were to go to AutoZone to check for cost and availability on any of these three different parts, and select them, and click post, you'll notice that it just transfer those parts directly to the work order. But I want to show you what your option is there. So some people prefer that, and then they can go back in and they can check for uh, or place the order electronically as needed. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and put a check mark on a couple of items here. So uh, let me filter this down again using the query, unselect all, and select just a couple of items here. Water pump and the drive belt. Nice and easy. Select it and serpentine belt and some hoses. Doesn't really matter for this demonstration purpose. And you'll notice when I click on post, it just transfers those three items right to the work order real quick like. Now, I'm going to turn on a function and do the exact same thing again. So if I go back in integration configuration settings and where it says skip post review screen, if I change that to false and go back into point of sale, do the exact same thing over again, you're going to see that it's going to come up with a intermediate or an interim screen where I have the ability to actually order those parts immediately. So again, I'll go to AutoZone and do my lookup. As you can see here, AutoZone quickly came back with my results again, and I'm going to click on the part type, and I'm going to narrow down my search results, apply my filter, and select the same items. I'll go with a water pump, and I'll go with a belt, Again, it doesn't really matter for this demonstration purpose and the lower cooler coolant hose. Now, here's the subtle difference. When I click on post now, it's coming up with a part and labor review post screen. At this point, it's giving me the ability, if I wanted to, to go ahead and put check marks on these three items to go ahead and order those electronically from AutoZone. Again, when I'm doing a quote, I typically just want to build the quote, give it to the customer, and not actually place the order until I have the approval, obviously, from the customer. So this is one screen that we can turn off that it just skips it rather than making you come to here and make a decision on if you want to order them or just post the products without ordering. So again, I'll leave those deselected and just click post order. And again, I end up with the three parts on my work order. If I quote the customer for the parts and labor, say it's $450, and now they approve the work to be done, I always have the ability to come back right click in the part number field and choose what's called V order. V order will remember all of the parts that have been applied to this repair order by way of vast commerce. And it gives me that same pop-up screen or a similar pop-up screen where it remembered the three parts and the supplier that I had selected and it would allow me to cherry pick or order all of these items immediately now electronically. So if I click on order, boom, it's gonna send a outside purchase order directly to AutoZone and those parts are now on order and will be delivered. So I'm just going to cancel out of that screen for the time being, and we'll continue with the demonstration.
I'm going to go ahead and delete these three items. And the next thing that I'm going to do is go into Vast Commerce, Integration Configuration Settings, and I'll change the Skip Post Preview screen back to True. I'm going to change the Advance on Select from True to False. And I'm going to show you what this looks like with regard to packages. If I go to throw an oil change package on this customer's ticket, I'll go ahead and select the synthetic blend. And you'll notice that right now it comes up and it says that I've got this filter. And now I've got to click on it. Well, why is it just sitting here? Well, it's because of the integration configuration setting that I had chosen where it says advance on select is false. If that were set to true, it will take away all of the manual steps where I have to then drag my mouse down to the bottom right and click on post. And now it's coming up with the oil viscosity. So again, I've got to manually click on fluid and then click on the proper viscosity and then manually click on select, then choose the oil and manually select the capacity and then click the quantity, manually click select, and then click build. So there's a lot of clicking going on there, as you saw in several different instances. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this oil change package and go back into integration configuration settings and turn this back on, advance on select to true. Again, I this is a preference. I believe it's much faster, much more efficient. You tell me. If I go to packages now and go to LOF services, synthetic blend, Here's the first thing that we notice. As soon as I put a check mark on this filter, it automatically posts it. So it's intuitive. It thinks, hey, this is all that you need at this particular instance is the oil filter. Boom, I put a check mark on it, it advanced. Now the next thing that it did is it automatically clicked on the fluid button for me. It assumes that I need to go out and find the appropriate viscosity. And again, when I put a check mark on this, I do not need to hit select. It auto advances for me to the next item in the list. There we go, it automatically pulled up the oil for me based on the 530. When I double click on this, it automatically popped up the capacity. I didn't need to click on the capacity button, it's auto advancing. Again, as soon as I click on the six quarts, I will not have to hit select, it automatically advances. And I can determine what I wanna do with that extra sixth quart of oil because my oil change package was based on a five quart capacity. In this case, I like to choose the option that says add additional part to the work order for additional oil with a price increase. Lastly, again, this is just a preference, but I like to include the function of non-package and hit build, which gives me the flexibility. Like I said, I could change the price of that oil filter if needed, and I could change the quantities. So there's a quick, simple demonstration of some of the features and functionality within Vast Commerce integration configuration settings. Now we have automatic error reporting functions that have been added to this as well throughout the integration. Um, obviously I have them all set to true, so I can report issues of missing labor operations or missing catalog manufacturers or specs or VIN errors. What this means here is if I'm in the vast commerce catalog in parts or labor or specs, I can report back to MAM catalog team very quickly and easily anything that's missing. So at the bottom of my screen here, you see this blue link that says missing, uh, report incorrect or missing labor. Well, if I was say in the brakes category and drum brakes and it said no data available, obviously this vehicle doesn't have drum brakes, but if for some reason it came up and the data was incorrect, I have the ability to report on this and it pops up a walkthrough uh, to report or troubleshoot. And as you'll notice, it automatically captured the category and group that I was working with, the preference list that I'm using so they can go back in and test and see if it's a problem with my particular setup and the vehicle year make and model. And I can put in any of my notes here and hit next and submit the missing or incorrect specs for that particular vehicle. Is it missing or incorrect? I'll say that it's missing and hit next and select the area um, and provide any details and next. And basically it will submit a ticket to our catalog team. I'll go ahead and cancel out of there. 
Not only is that available in the labor tab, that is also available in the part tab. So if you're looking for a specific brand and it's not coming up or the part number does not exist, immediately report that to our catalog team. And lastly, on the specs screen, we have the same functionality there to be able to report missing or incorrect or invalid specs. So that's just a quick demonstration, again, in integration configuration settings of the error reporting that's available as part of Vast Commerce. We talked about the labor uh, that's set to true. Uh, scheduled maintenance hide inspection items. Um, I've set that to false. I could go in and show you that if you'd like to see more detail about that. The services here, uh, there shouldn't be anything that needs to be changed in this by the customer at any time. Um, and technical specifications highlight non-conventional oil types. I've set mine to true. Um, and what this would do is if uh, the vehicle that I'm working with is requiring something non-conventional, OE like a uh, an OEM specified oil or something like that, it's going to highlight the fluid button with a bright yellow neon background. I can give you an example of what that'll look like right now. So again, a quick demonstration. I've pulled up a vehicle for Marty Klosterman here. I've got a 2016 BMW X5 with a 4.4 liter engine. And as I said, you can easily see here the fluid button is highlighted on a bright neon yellow or a yellow background identifying that, hey, before you quote this customer any kind of an oil change price, you want to double click or select the fluid button to ensure that you're quoting the customer appropriately based on the proper number of quarts and the type of oil that they may need because it might not be something that you stock in bulk at your local store. And clearly here we can see that it's calling for 10 quarts and it's suggesting here options, OE part number specifications, looking for BMW long life rating, it's got to have SC 068, uh, you know, it's still an 030 viscosity, but you're looking for some very specific grade of oil here. So again, helpful information to be able to share with the technician or with the customer to set the proper expectation. The last thing that I'd like to show is the ability to do a labor lookup and find the appropriate parts based on the labor selection. I know in the previous demonstration, I had walked through my preferred flow of going into Vast Commerce, the item broker, and selecting the parts first and letting the parts determine the type of labor that I wanted to look up. However, that's not necessarily everybody's choice. So I do want to show you that there is a optional labor function. If I were to go into labor again and perform a water pump lookup, water pump R&R, &R, like I said, I showed you this labor lookup before, nice and easy. But what we have is we've got the ability here to select a labor description or multiple labor descriptions. If in this case, I also wanted to do the uh, radiator hose upper and lower, I could start by selecting my labor first. There's no harm in doing it this way either. Now, at the bottom of the screen, we have this magnifying glass that says replacement part lookup. Use V item broker to search for the replacement part defined. So by clicking on this, it's coming up with a whole list of different part types that could be associated with the upper and lower hose, the water pump, etc. Now, I don't want to look up all of these parts clearly. It would take forever. So I unselect all and just simply click on radiator hose 1, radiator hose 2. That basically identifies radiator hose upper and lower. And I'm also going to put a check mark on engine water pump. By selecting these three different part types and then clicking on look up parts, it's basically going backwards now and it's saying, okay, I know that you've chosen these three labor operations and now it's attempting to look for an engine water pump. Now, this is part of the downside, in my opinion, of going this route is that it's only looking for the water pump at this moment. So rather than it looking for the water pump, the upper and lower hose all in one swoop, I'd have to go into AutoZone or one of my suppliers. And you'll notice as soon as I put a check mark on the water pump that I want, it will automatically advance or take me to step two of three, which is going to be the upper hose and then the lower hose. So to me, it seems a little bit more time consuming, but I'll show you just the same. So it automatically advanced to two of three, but now I'm looking for the radiator hose. Well, you know, it gave me a nice narrow list of upper and lower, so that's kind of nice. And again, now I'm looking for the next hose, 
you know, I couldn't put check marks on both of them at the same time, so now I'll grab the other hose. And here we bring over our upper radiator hose, lower hose, and our water pump. So there are, again, differences and preferred methods on how to use vast commerce for looking up parts and labor, but it's very flexible. It's, it's um, you know, user-definable on how you'd like to proceed. So that wraps up my video on the back end setup and configuration options of Vast Commerce. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thank you.